The Buchla easel comes in a portable case, but this one is different. The Arturia Buchla Easel V is a faithful recreation of this legendary West Coast Synthesis instrument. In this video I'll cover West Coast sound design as reflected in the easel, and how this virtual synth takes it to the next level. One of the keys to understanding this instrument quickly is that color matters. That's why I took some of my daughter's washi tape and stuck it on my controller. She didn't have red, so we'll have to settle for pink instead of red. The second thing you should note overall is that most of the sliders come in pairs. The one on the right controls the main function, and the left one, the modulation intensity, which we'll get to later once we start patching cables. The black section on the right is our dual low pass gate, basically lets you hear the oscillators either manually or later on through an envelope. Level one represents the red or complex oscillator, and level two, the blue or modulation oscillator. It has three simple waveforms and two frequency levels or modes. High is in the audible range, and you can control it in quantized or non-quantized steps. And the low range goes from inaudible to a low bass. In the low range, it acts as an LFO, a low frequency oscillator designed to modulate other parameters on the easel. The second oscillator on the easel is the complex oscillator. Its core shape is a sine wave and what's special or complex about it is that besides adjusting its frequency, you can also change its timbre and add additional waveforms to it, increasing the complexity even more. And this is one of the core ideas of West Coast Synthesis, the complex oscillators. This is what gives it part of its unique sound, but there's more. But before we get to more West Coast stuff, there's a very East Coast keyboard connected to the easel though it does have pressure and modulation capabilities, which we'll get to in a bit. Now, notice the sound is playing even though I leave the keys. That's because the gate is constantly open. And the way to solve that is to route our orange envelope, you guessed it, into the gate. Now to do that, we need to first make sure that the envelope is triggered by the keyboard, and that's set by this switch. And then we need to look for an orange output on the patch board and connect it to the black inputs of the gate. And this is a good opportunity to say that the black jacks on the patch board are always inputs. So you see how colors are very significant on the easel. Also important to say, the, each black input controls the slider directly above it. And with that said, let's connect the cable. It's a simple drag and drop, but making that connection isn't enough. Now, remember I said the sliders come in pairs. This is where the left side comes in, and I set the knobs on my controller to control the left side of each pair. And that left side controls the amplification of the voltage coming in from the envelope generator, and that in turn affects the volume of each note. Now, you can actually pull more than one cable out of each output. So if I want my modulation operator to join the party, I just drag another cable and pull its left lever up to allow modulation or voltage control. Now I can start messing around with the sounds, like changing the relative pitch. By the way, the keyboard is controlling the pitch of both oscillators because these two switches are on. You can always turn them off if you want um, each of the oscillators to function independently of keyboard voltage control. Okay, so we've heard the modulation oscillator make sounds. Now it's time for it to justify its name and start modulating. And it will be easier for us to get the idea of modulation if we put the range of the modulation oscillator in low mode. And using uh, this switch, let's start with amplitude modulation, which is basically tremolo. Now we can always go to high rates and let the craziness starts, and we'll get to that. Let's have a little taste of it. But before we do that, let's look at FM or frequency modulation. And at low rates and low depths, that is basically 
either a cop coming or vibrato. And of course, at uh, the higher rates, FM modulation starts to get its familiar sound. So let's do start checking out the higher rates of both amplitude and frequency modulation. This is what a high rate of AM sounds like. And let's kick the range into high. And it's nice when it's manually modulated and even more when you start automating this. The third type of modulation is balanced or ring modulation. Uh, this won't have any effect unless I connect a DAW and route audio into the uh, external input. We'll drop that for now and just stick with AM and FM. So modulation is where the easel really starts to shine. Let's hook up the mod wheel to our timbre. Now remember, hooking up the cable isn't enough. You also need to increase the degree by which the mod wheel voltage affects the timbre. Timbre in West Coast Synthesis is sort of like the opposite of a filter. It adds harmonics instead of reducing them. Now another important idea in West Coast Synthesis is randomness. And there's plenty of it on the bukla. Each of these white outputs represents a source of uncertainty or randomness. And right now it's set so that every time I press a key, another random voltage is generated. But I can set it wild and let it just run free based on the rate of the pulser, which we can adjust, of course, and modulate if we want. Which brings us to the topic of our yellow pulser. So the pulser has a few sources of triggers that you can select, depending whether you want it synced to the internal clock of the bukla, you want it free running, um, or synced to an external source. Oh, and by the way, you can modulate the pulser as well using any voltage source. So imagine it changing based on voltage or just randomly. Take that East Coast. Okay, so the clock setting on the pulser is a great opportunity to introduce you to this guy down here. So this is pretty straightforward. This is how you change the clock rate. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, before we do, I'll do some cleanup. I'll disconnect the mod wheel cable and I'll move the random cable so that it controls timbre. Just a little bit more uh, interesting in my view than pitch. Okay, so that's more or less clocks and timing. Let's move on to envelopes. So this works a little bit differently than what you'd expect to see in a regular synth. The sliders are upside down compared to what you'd expect. So the lower slider goes, the longer the attack or decay, not shorter. There are a bunch more options to the envelopes, including turning them into an LFO. I won't get into that now. You can check out the manual if you want to dig deeper there. Let's move on to the sequencer. So the easel has a built-in three to five step sequential volt source, and you can route those to anywhere you want. Now I've chosen pitch because that's the one that's easiest to hear. And notice as I change the voltage sliders in the sequencer, it affects the pitch of the oscillator. You can also change the number of steps to have either three, four, or five steps. Now Arturia have also added a 32 step sequencer and I'll show you that later on, but this is how it is originally in the easel. While we're on that topic, let me show you a few more of the original easel features recreated here. Um, I'll just clean up some of the routings. So the, the original easel is monophonic, which means you only get one note and voice at a time. If you press a few notes, it'll still play just one note at a time. Now there's an arpeggiator uh, to help you out, and I'll show you that in a bit. But before, let me explain these four buttons and knobs on the right. So what these do is they offset the notes by either preset amounts, which you can configure in the knobs, four different note presets, or offset presets, and they can just do, the buttons can just behave as octave transposers. Finally, the arpeggiator is over here, and it can be either 
um, ascending, random, or off. Now, Arturia have gone ahead and added up to four note polyphony, which you can very easily configure using this uh, little button right here. And you have a polyphonic boucle. Another typical characteristic of the easel is the low pass gate. The idea here is that the gate can be an amplitude uh, gate, as it is in typical synths, but it also has the ability to combine a low pass filter in it. Um, and this is best demonstrated using uh, a noise oscillator as a sound source. Listen closely, the amp only increases or decreases the volume of the noise. But if we move the gate to a low pass filter mode, you can see the character of the noise changes. And there's also a combined mode where both the volume and the low pass filter are applied to the sound. Now, if you look at the patch bay, remember the black inputs are all associated but with the sliders, but the colorful ones seem randomly laid out. And you'll see that the smart thing about this as I go through presets is that the wires don't conceal a lot of the UI. So this odd desi design choice is actually a smart way of keeping things clear and clean. Before I move on, let me play a few presets for you. And then I'll move on to what Arturia added to the easel. Because up until now, it's been pretty much a faithful repl replication of the original easel. I mean, except for polyphony soldering and a few touches here and there, you could actually pick up the original easel manual and get along just fine with this virtual easel. Okay, let's start with a clean preset. And if I click on these two arrows here, the future opens up with four Arturia add-ons to the easel. Let's look at timbre. Here I'm modulating it manually with my left hand. And this menu gives me five more pretty quick left hands. So here I can choose the depth and draw the shape of the left hand modulation. And I can pretty much draw any chart I want with as many points as I like. And there are five such left hands for me to use. The second main addition is the right hand sequencer, basically. Let's draw some notes. You can also control the four preset uh, voltage buttons here as well. This is pretty uh, straightforward stuff. I can change the speed, I can change uh, if it runs in a loop or once, and the notes are transposed as I play along. Next up is gravity. And here, I'm affecting pitch, or any other modulation destination I want. So the idea is that you can take the XY coordinates of this little crazy dot um, and have it affect different parameters on the easel. This white sun is a deflector. This is a black hole. It attracts the particle. There are also portals and walls. So it seems like Hollywood is also a West Coast influence here. And this brings a lot of uh, randomness and fun to the boucle experience. Let's affect another parameter. Let's patch this into, uh, say, timbre, why not? So you can see, unlike the original easel where you could only plug one modulation source into each input, here you can do much more. And the fourth add-on is uh, effects. This is pretty much par for the course, um, like any other Arturia virtual synth. Ton of effects you can add. I picked a chorus here. Let's add another one. Let's say delay. And that's pretty much it. Now, I highly recommend you download the demo for this and try it out. Every time I touch the easel, something starts that first thing just doesn't stop, but in a good way. And second thing is a discovery uh, for me and a true joy and very different from existing synths. If you learned something about West Coast synthesis, hit like, write a comment. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.